continuation of this uh, circuit design on the side here as we were basically we're going to do an extreme close-up of this and what it is it is it is a a landscape of follicles that are transducers and we can see that just the process of zooming in has caused a reaction of waveforms and you see it's reverberating that additional viewpoint is reverberating is causing this thing to be engulfed within the context of that observation if that makes sense um, so now everything is a part of that um, observed phase space essentially so these things are are no longer um, they're no longer spectators uh, they are part of the actual um, composition. And yeah, see, it's cascaded all the way up to the top of the circuit. Um, and I will just, uh, I'll illustrate it, make it easy on us. We'll just color this in. that's the thing it's they say you can't observe something without kind of being a part of it it, it engulfs you yeah. it's like that kind of like the Heisenberg uncertainty principle you can't know something you can't have position and velocity at the same time I believe it talking on my ass basically right now as usual um, but you become what you observe so be careful what you look at we have these little many portals to observe things and it's all at our fingertips, literally. We're programming ourselves, programming our eyes, programming our ears, constantly programming yourself. And it re the, your actions reinforce further action, further, re further reprogramming. And you, you are not a spectator. You are not a product or a victim of the society and these consumer you know everyone's oh they're trying to get me to buy things they're selling my selling my identity and they're 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 programming me to buy this and this because I'm looking at my phone and because it saw something and you know my I look at one website and it gets stored in my cookies and then another they sell those cookies to other website providers which is why you see like on the, your side or wherever, you'll start seeing things that you bought or you looked at on other sites and other, you know, because they all share it, you know, but it's, that's not your, that's not their fault. That's, you know, that's your, that's all on you. You decide, you make that decision. You make the decisions to be a part of your environment. You make the decision to be a part of any environment. And that's, in a nutshell, oh, by the way, under here, we're gonna have a tunnel system. Um, oh, here he is, little man's awake. Hey, buddy. While I'm letting that other thing dry, and rather than refill the gold, I'll just uh, work on this. I was doing this one yesterday, and 
See if I can pin in some white. Oh, damn it. I don't think I have any. I'm going to let that other thing dry rather than refill it. I'm just going to start something new. And nothing in particular. Basically, it looks like some, a tiered hierarchy of sideways mustaches and or a individual whose shoulders are mustaches. Zappa mustaches sideways. If Zappa were a, were rather than a human being, but a tiered hierarchy of human beings. And these could terminate into a juncture of some point as mustaches tend to do, at least the ones in this universe, they are actually used as junctures within a circuit. And you'll see a lot more of these circuit type things. I, I'm very repetitive in my style. And I incorporate lots of circuitry and mustaches and eyebrows and languages. T-shaped things is what this, and I don't really like the, I'm trying something new. I'm basically essentially using black dye instead of acrylic and it, it's very difficult to paint with. And I embrace difficulty as if I weren't handicapped enough. I would like to, I enjoy handicapping myself. I, um, the limitations of, are, are inspiring in and of themselves. You know, in the same way, I, you know, I, I feel Django Reinhardt, my second favorite guitar player, as good as he is, I don't think he would. So if you, for you, those who don't know about Django Reinhardt, he is a, he's the second greatest guitar player in history. And he had a accident early in his career in which his hand was melted. You know, if there was a fire, melted his hand. So he only played on his fretting hand. He played with like two fingers and a stub. And, uh, but what it did, it changed, it, it forced him to change his playing style into something different, more horizontal. He, um, rather than, you see a lot of these guitar players playing arpeggios vertically, he plays, he resumed his career playing more horizontal arpeggios. Moral of the story is the handicap in and of itself will be that which takes you to the next level, ironically enough. Same thing, Tony Iommi, another one of my favorite guitar player, guitar players. Tony Iommi played guitar for Black Sabbath. He slammed his hand, or he, did, he hurt his hand doing some in, uh, industrial accident or shut it in a car door. I can't remember how he hurt his fingers, but it forced him. He wears these thimbles on his fingers because of that, and he has to play really uh, light God strings, but he also had to detune his guitar as a result of that because uh, he couldn't bend the strings as much. And that detuning of the guitar, it basically spawned an entire genre of these detuned guitars, which, you know, as we know, all these metal popular metal bands are playing detuned guitars because, but not for the same reason that Tony did. Tony, you know, he was just doing it as a means to an end, but that handicap that he had forced him to detune his guitar and it started a whole genre. And so maybe my incorporation of handicaps deliberately um, is, is just kind of my way of trying to find some, trying to break to the next level through self-limitation because limitation is endearing. Limitation. Limitation is an art in itself. Because we, we introduce stresses through our introduction, deliberate introduction of stress. We break to the next level. We're forced, forces our brain to 
enhance its mode of thought. You know, weightlifters, they subject their muscles to stresses. You'll notice I switch hands. I just, I just, I don't want to, I have this habit of getting paint on my hand. <laughs> and speaking of limitations, I'm painting with my left hand, but just, I just don't like getting paint on my hands. So I just, to avoid the reach over. And plus it's more for you as the viewer, if you are anyone who's going to watch this, you're, rather than seeing my hand, just because my stupid way of recording this. I'll just try to give them as much of the process to you as I can. I must refill, leave this be for a minute. Sometimes I just like to use markers. You know, it's best, this is probably going to bleed through, so probably a good idea to, I love this stuff. This is good. The, uh, I got this at Walmart. Just take it down and use a piece of cardboard. I'll probably end up using this cardboard for something else. I use every little bit. When I run out of paper, I use the cardboard. So I am cheap like a mofo. All right. So we're just going to make start something here. This is like a fuse box for a Nissan Sentra. And my wife had a tendency to use that makeup mirror, right? She uh, and she would leave it open, and the battery would die in the car. So I could take out the fuse. That way, there's no light. You know, but all I do is just turn off the light bulb to that little mirror thing 